But can you imagine lifting all roads in Seoul by six inches? This would be incredibly costly, okay? We have 10 years. We don't know how to do something in a coordinated way in those 10 years. The IPCC is trying to help the world community understand risks and dangers, including in disasters, are becoming increasingly worrisome. Things like sea level rise, storms, and other attributes of uh, warming. Now evident, it is now existing in all parts of the world, and it is getting more problematic. As you indicated, the real challenge is that there is big variation, big variation in the amount of water that is uh, being stored in the atmosphere. The temperature that can vary from very cold to very warm. We can have floods, we can have droughts. That variation is the most serious challenge of climate change because we as human beings and all of the other living things on the planet are now experiencing this large variation. So the more accurate thing is to talk about climate change and the reason for crisis, for example, high temperature events or high storm events or sudden sea level rise or long drought or uh, sudden and severe flooding is that that is becoming more frequent. We used to talk about 100-year disaster or 100-year storm, but we are now seeing the things we thought would only occur in 100 years now occurring in 50, 30, 20 years. We are now having to adapt to that, and that's why climate crisis is now uh, the best term. 40도에 육박하는 폭염을 겪고 있습니다. 유례 없는 홍수로 큰 피해를 보고 있습니다. 전 세계가 기후 재앙으로 몸살을 앓고 있습니다. 이코노믹 success. If you look at the growth in wealth worldwide over the last 150 years, it's exceptional. Really, really grew fast, okay? But that growth took place with an increasing release of uh, greenhouse gases uh, into the atmosphere. 3.3 tons per person per year is what our planet can absorb at 1990 population levels. Some parts of the world are well below the 3.3 standard. Some, including my country, are much above. So the United States is roughly 16 tons per person per year. I believe that many Koreans know that they are well above also in the 12, 11 tons per person. So this creates a, a problem of not only solving the economic challenge and the climate challenge together, but also doing it in what is called a just and fair transition. So we now face, very important to human uh, life, economy that's growing, is offset by increased intensity of storms and other disasters that we are experiencing as part of our growth. And so that difficulty, sometimes conflict, is what makes it, I think, particularly hard to uh, change uh, because we still want that growth and in some parts of the world as you know 
The poverty is still grinding and difficult for people, a very large percentage of people. And so we have to find a way to solve the economic challenge and the climate challenge at the same time. The 3.3 tons reminds us that we are living in a physically finite and complete system. We are not going to get more atmosphere. You know, sometimes we think through technology or other means we can invent this and that. We cannot have, we have to live within the atmosphere we were given and we have to find a way to do that in a sustainable and balanced way. We also have to do that in a way that all communities uh, across the planet fairly uh, participate in uh, economic uh, progress. I don't want to overly focus on economic me metrics, but I do want to, on this question, point these things out. The U.S. in the last 16 years clean up through payments made by insurance companies and by governments to clean up after repeated storms, repeated floods, repeated droughts, and so on. The amount is 1.6 trillion U.S. dollars in those 16 years. A hundred billion dollars every year. Even a really wealthy country like the U.S. cannot afford, uh, that cost is only going to increase because the storm's intensity and that sort of thing is gonna increase. So that's, that's one problem. A second problem, and I think this is somewhat important for, for Korea as a peninsular country. Peninsulas have low-lying, highly developed areas, okay, near the sea. As an example, Miami, in the southern part of the United States, is experiencing what is called sunny day flooding. It's not raining, it's not cloudy, but the roads are puddling to the point where you are driving everywhere you go, you are driving in water. And the reason for that is sea level rise. Uh, Miami has actually considered lifting the height of its roadways in order to <laughs> provide some measure of offset for sea level rise. But can you imagine lifting all roads in Seoul? by six inches would be incredibly costly, okay? So, you know, if you visit Busan and you see all those beautiful urban developments that are very close to the sea, you have to worry. What is their future? And uh, I'm not trying to be alarmist, I'm just saying that we have to find a way to address this problem. Sea level rise is ubiquitous. In order to make that change, we all have to contribute. It's not Busan's problem, it's all of our problems. I don't want to overstate this, but I think our engineering has found reasonable technology solutions we could apply today. Many economic barriers have been re removed so that we can actually deploy these technologies in support of this change. The sector that has really failed human population is the policy sector. We have had strong words and uh, statements that we will be serious and do something, but we haven't done what we need to do. For example, I know everybody is now, and I am excited, that the Biden administration passed the Inflation Reduction Act. Finally, the U.S. has a coherent climate policy. I know for many this is, will be surprising, 
But the U.S. has been without a climate policy until late last year. That's unbelievable, okay? <laughs> and I just give you one little point that maybe you'll find amusing about American policy making. Remember, I called this policy the first comprehensive climate policy. It doesn't say anything about climate in the title of the bill. The reason is that the U.S. has had so much difficulty passing that the president had to use a special device to get this bill passed showing that its purpose was an economic purpose. And so, Inflation Reduction Act. <laughs> that delay has caused more pain in the world. So it's that policy sector that I think must uh, perform much better than it has uh, to this point. And then the other thing that, that really I think is becoming increasingly important, and I think it is, I think it is, I think we didn't ourselves know the potential until we began working with cities, including Seoul. It means that roughly 60% of Seoul's daytime electricity needs could be provided by a distributed solar system.